Hello. Just wanted to uh, show something real quick. Uh, so this is the latest project that I've made. Uh, I made a Wii and made it into essentially a Wii laptop. That's what I'm calling it. So I just wanted to kind of show you um, a little bit of uh, just the design and what I've done as far as modding it goes and everything like that. So anyways, um, this version of it right now, it still runs off of regular power. Um, I'm planning on getting a battery for it that I can just attach, you know, with Velcro or whatever, whenever I need it, so that way it doesn't need to be attached to power. Um, so I've got this enabled to be able to be used that way. I just don't have the battery just yet. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, essentially what I did, uh, the how-to that I was using showed how to make like a custom case and everything like that, but I don't have all the tools or time necessary to do that because that takes a, a lot of time and a lot of different tools that I don't have. So I decided to just use the actual casing of the Wii for it because it's kind of already a good shape for you know a laptop type type model, you know, putting a screen and I just attached the screen directly to it. Um, so anyways, <clears throat> basically what I've got here, I have a soft modded Wii system, so this can run uh, emulators and you know run uh, stuff off of a USB or an SD card, you know, if you choose. Uh, and what I've done to the actual Wii itself, I'll show you kind of the sides. If, if you notice, the uh, if you look in here to the ports, hopefully the camera can pick it up. If you look at the ports, though, uh, I actually desoldered the ports from the board. So the infrared, uh, the infrared bar, or the sensor bar, the AV component cables um, that go to your TV, as well as the power cable, those are all removed from the board. So what I did is I soldered directly the wires directly to that. And then those are all coming out of the uh, this little vent, air vent right here. And then they just go up to uh, the screen. So any future versions of this, I'm going to be making some of these, uh, hopefully, you know, to sell some online. So any future versions, there's a lot of things that I, I found as I was doing this that I can do better. Um, for instance, I didn't have the uh, forethought to put some heat shrink tubing on these wires before I put them in so I just had to wrap them in electrical tape which is fine I mean it's it's gonna hold just fine there's not there's minimal movement when the screen is open so it's not like it's gonna cause any damage over time but that'll just make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing you know some of the other wires that I ended up doing um, after this part you know like here I did use heat shrink tubing I'm not sure if you can see that but it just makes it look a little bit nicer um, but anyways this is a uh, Philips screen that I just took. Um, this is a slave screen from a dual uh, dual screen DVD player. So the main DVD player has the screen and then it also has a connection to go into this. Which worked really well um, because this ha already was set up to have an input into it. So that way, you know, we could just use the input cables from this directly to it. And if you notice on the bottom, so what I did is I, I cut a hole in the back um, right here this is where the wires go to and then they're soldered directly to this is normally where you would plug in your uh, audio slash video cables and on right here if you notice it looks like a headphone jack that's basically what they use they used a headphone jack and then they had a little um, uh, adapter that you plug your red white and yellow cables into it and then it plugs into here so that there only needs to be one cord um, so that's actually useful. I was just able to solder the wires from the Wii onto the board there. And what's cool about doing it this way is I kept this intact, which means that you can still use this as a monitor for something else. So if you wanted to use it with the DVD, well, of course you can play DVDs from this Wii, but if you're using it for something else, like a Blu-ray player or whatever, you can connect that to this. And as long as the Wii is powered off, it'll, it'll still work with that. So that's something that's kind of neat because I left that port intact. So as long as it's not receiving a signal from the Wii, then it'll work just fine with something else. It's also got the headphone port still accessible as well as the volume, the brightness, and then the power uh, switch as well. So it worked really well. And the size of the screen, it is a tad bit larger than the Wii, um, but I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's still, you know, when it's closed, it still looks pretty good. Um, and the, um, the size of it was good. And then the housing, I mean, it's pretty thick. LCDs don't take up a lot of space, but if you notice, the housing for this screen that they used was pretty bulky. So I was able to use that to my advantage because there's plenty of room for all the wires and the sensor bar. If you notice, I don't know if you can tell from the camera there, but I did cut out a couple spots for the infrared bar. And I'm going to uh, end up getting some 
um, either some infrared tape or something like that to cover this just so that it looks you know one one bar straight across so you can't see these cutouts quite as much um, but anyways I've got the Wii sensor bars in here and if you notice the the typical Wii sensor bar is about that long so they're pretty far apart if you've ever tried to use a Wiimote on your Wii close to it it doesn't detect it you have to be kind of far back because of the way that the LED lights are placed on those but I've got it a lot closer together so the actual usable distance from the Wii is about right here which is really convenient whenever you have a small unit like this I just have a simple hinge attaching the two together um, just connected with command strips the command strips are rated for about five to seven pounds of pressure that they can hold the screens only about a pound so that's more than enough you know to prevent it from falling off or anything like that and it actually worked really well um, to, to do it that way so anyways um, currently if you notice in the back and I'll power this on in a second so you can see it, it, it working and everything. Um, I've got two wires coming out of here. So these wires, I'll end up shortening them because they don't need to be so long. Um, I just I just didn't bother with it whenever I was messing with it. But one of these is for the power in the Wii, one of them is for the screen. The only downside to using this screen is that the, uh, the, the um, power source that it needs to be is 9 volt output. The Wii is 12 volt output. Because of that, unless you use a, a little... You know, circuit board with a resistor on or something like that you can't use the same battery and you can't use the same power cord so that's the only downside to this screen but it's um, it's good because the screen like I said the housing works well to fit all the wiring and everything it already had the inputs which was really nice and it's cheap you can get a used one for like 17 to 20 bucks online so they're they're cheap and they're pretty easy to find um, so like I said the downside is it you know whenever I get a battery I'll have to have two batteries which won't be too bad. I'll just get two batteries that are similar shape that I can just mount on the underside of the Wii. So it'll add a little bit of bulk to it, but from the ones that I've seen, I mean, you're only out talking about adding about half the width of this screen onto it. So it's still going to be, you know, about that big. It'll, it'll still be pretty small. Um, I've got two different types of cables here. Um, I tinkered around with a couple of different ones. Um, my first idea was just to use, if you can see this, a standard headphone uh, cord, 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable. So, and I just... Um, I just bought that and just soldered the the cables to it and this actually is a uh, three channel headphone jack it's meant for like a headphone repair that's got a microphone or something like that um, I only use two channels obviously positive and negative because it's just got power running to it and a Wii cord I have um, I have this set up so I shortened it because I didn't need all the extra cords and the whole idea of this is to try to make it compact get rid of all the bulky cords and stuff like that that's why I don't have anything coming out the side, which I really like. So I've got a um, female headphone jack uh, auxiliary port here. So, you know, to run the power, you just connect the two. And then the other one that I used is this is just a standard video cable, uh, AV cable. So this one I actually like better just because um, to clip this in, if you've ever, if you've ever, you know, clipped like a pair of headphones or something in, there's a pretty... You know, it takes quite a bit of pressure to push it in, and just over time, I can see that probably wearing out. Um, whereas with this one, I just used two. So this is the cable for the uh, for the screen, and I shortened it as well. So I just have two male AV cables with a female coupler. So it just goes in like this. It's it goes in a lot easier, and this was good too because there's only two wires for this to begin with. Um, there's just the one for the ground and one for the actual cable, which I just use for positive and negative. So it, it works a lot easier to clip these two together, um, so I liked it better. And then what is cool about doing it this way is the battery you can make detachable, like I said, with Velcro or whatever. And then all you'll have to do is just plug these into the battery to give it power, and then you can unplug it and plug it into here. So the battery, um, is this is designed mostly to be plugged into a power source. I've got a, uh, I, I made it for like in my car when I'm on my lunch breaks and stuff like that, and I've got a... Um, what a, a power adapter that plugs into my lighter, uh, the lighter port on my car and the car lighter, and then, um, sorry, and then you can plug one of these into it. So that's what I designed it for. But I, I, the battery is only going to be designed to give it one to two hours use. So this isn't meant to be like something you use for hours and hours and hours. I'm not looking to put a laptop battery on it just because they're a lot longer than this. They're really not the shape that I'm looking for. So while I'm going to have that as an option, you know, I wanted to have. I wanted to make it not permanent so that you can still use these to plug it into power. So anyways, um, that's enough about talking about the design. I'm going to go ahead and power it up. Uh, one other thing I'll say, the strap, this is a strap that came with it. It's meant to be strapped to the back of a of a, the seat of your car. 
um, for the DVD player. Anyways, I just use this to, uh, because there's, there's not any clip or whatever to secure it, so I just use this to do that so it doesn't fly open or anything like that. But that's obviously, it's uh, not necessary, but I just put that in there, so. Anyways, I'm gonna power it on so you can see everything working and see how it is, so. All of the, uh, I didn't do any board trimming or anything like that. All the main components are still there, minus the, uh, the power and the video and the sensor bar. But everything else is still there, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, power this up so you can see it working. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna be making another one of these. Um, and I'm gonna be making another one of these, and I'm gonna be improving on some of the design. Like I said, some of the heat shrink cables that weren't in place um, prior to making it. You know, I'm gonna improve on that a little bit, and just some other different things here or there. So uh, there's a lot of things I can do to make it look a little bit nicer. So, anyways, this is just uh, kind of my first rough copy that I made. So, anyways, um, so I've got that on here. I've got Wiimote. Which I think is dead. Oh, this is the wrong one. Hang on. There we go. So uh, the disk drive and everything still works just fine. It's got a spot for the memory card, which is I've got an SD card in there. The GameCube ports and everything all work just fine. So I'll kind of turn this so you can see. So it's got the uh, brightness in the back. Uh, that's actually the volume. So the speaker. Another thing I loved about this screen is the fact that it has speakers in it already. So that's really convenient. A lot of people have used just regular um, LCD screens that they bought online or something like that, and you have to get speakers separately and wire them all up. So this just made it a lot more simple, and it's all integrated in there. And then here's the brightness. So, anyways, um, so you can see, so the range, you can have it up to, okay, right here is where it gets kind of crazy. So you can have it up to this close, which is only about, it's about a foot from the screen. So that's a really convenient range if you're in a short, in, in a small space to try to use it. Um, and like I said, uh, it does play regular games. I've got some, uh, some virtual console games, on, console games on here that I've loaded. It's got homebrew on it. So um, I guess I'll just play a, a quick game real quick just so you can see the GameCube controller working. And it has the memory slots, like everything Everything works completely fine. So, here's GameCube controller. And like I said, the speakers are actually really loud. pretty much it um, so I hope you enjoy the video um, if you're interested in one of these send me a PM and uh, I'll let you know you know what uh, the going price is gonna be if I I'll be building these to order um, and uh, yeah so anyways um, hope you enjoyed it and I'll put some links in the description that were helpful to me if you want to build one yourself I'll put some links in the description about some of the parts that I used and hey sorry about that the video got cut off um, Anyways, so um, like I said, I'll put some links in the description if you're wanting to uh, learn how to make one of these yourself. There was a, a thread or a post on Engadget that was really helpful to me. So I'll put a link in the description for that, some of the parts that I use and stuff like that. So anyways, like I said, if you're interested in getting one of these, uh, just PM me and I'll get you some information on that. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a good one.